All right, boys and girls, today I'm gonna to show you how to draw a three-dimensional looking cake. And we're gonna learn a little bit about the artist, Wayne Tebow. All right, so today I'm using a pencil and then I'll use a Sharpie and some markers. And I also have one of these cool Royal Langnickel Aquaflow brushes. So I don't have to have a cup of water and I can just spread my um, marker using the water from this brush. It's pretty neat. So the first thing we need to do is draw our cake. And I want to do an ellipse or oval first. And I have my paper horizontal, but you could do this vertically as well and turn your paper up and down. So I'm gonna start close to the top and I'm gonna practice making an ellipse for a second. Ellipse is oval. And I've got my hand on my paper. It gives me like a tripod to keep me steady. I'm just draw a kind of skinny oval. And if yours is not perfect, that's okay. We're gonna make a big slice out of it anyway. So look, mine's kind of thicker over here and thinner over there. It's all right. The next step, I wanna do the sides of my cake. And I don't wanna start them down here or it's gonna look like a top hat. I wanna start them right on the edges of my oval. I'm gonna come down, straight down, and straight down over here. Okay. Now, for the bottom of my cake, if I make it flat, it's going to throw off the whole illusion. This goes for any kind of cylinder that you're making, a can, whatever. Uh, you want the bottom to be, cur be curved like the top is curved. All right, so you want those to match. Now, I want to find the middle of my oval and make a little dot. And if I'm going too fast, you can always... Pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. Put me in slow motion. And then I want to do a slanted line here, maybe a slanted line there. And I'm gonna draw two more lines straight down. One, two. This is where my big slice is gonna be. So now, since I don't have cake here anymore, I'm gonna erase. And we don't have cake anymore here either. Alrighty. Now I need a line straight down from the middle. Your line's not perfectly straight like mine. It's okay. And then connect these two. But you want it to be kind of the same angle as you have up here. If it's way up here. Looks weird, doesn't it? If it's way down here, that's gonna look odd too. So you want it to match. Again, if it's not perfect, it's all right. We're just practicing. All right, so same thing here. This slant, this angle needs to match this angle down here. All right, now let's put some icing, some layers in our cake. I want to do, I don't know, two layers of icing. You could just do one if you want. You could do a whole bunch and have like a rainbow cake or something on the inside, it's up to you. But whatever um, line you do for your icing, it needs to match this one. Like if I did my icing like this, doesn't that look weird? So it needs to match the slice. Cause it's all the same piece. Nice thick layer of icing. Might need to make this a little bit more slanted. Hmm, I got a big gap right there. Let's move this. Same thing over here, make these connect, make it the same angle as this. Make these connect. That looks weird, why does that look weird?
lot of erasing, phew. But see, even our teachers mess up, that's all right. All right, so we've got our slice cut out. Now we can do the fun part of decorating our cake. You can put whatever kind of decorations on this that you want. Maybe you want um, a certain birthday theme on your cake. You want a certain school theme on your cake. It's up to you. Let's do a little icing. You could do a bumpy line. Put some icing around the edges. No, you can't see it through icing. So I'll erase. And erase. I like that going all the way around. Now, if you don't want to put icing, don't put icing. You want to put fruit or you want to put something different, go for it. You want your cake to have like drips coming down the sides, you could do that. Alright, I'll do some drips. Maybe it's like a little chocolate ganache dripping down or something. I think that's the right term for it. I don't know, I'm not a baker. <laughs> Alrighty. But we need a plate. Now, same thing for the plate that we did for the top. You need an ellipse. Maybe you have a fancy plate. Maybe you have a cake stand. Whatever you want. I'll do a little cake stand. Again, if you've got your paper turned vertical, you have a lot more room to add these details than I do. Okay, so now we've got our cake sketched out. We can trace. By the way, you can make your slice a lot smaller if you'd rather not to have so much cake cut out and you'd rather have more cake showing. You would just draw a smaller angle. I can show you how to do that real quick, I think. There's a smaller slice. So instead of having your line slant way out here, you could have your line slant your angle to be smaller. Wider angle, angle, smaller angle. And you still just draw a straight line down. Now this time you wouldn't be able to see all of the slice cut out. So see how that's different and you can't see the icing on the other side. So voila. All right, let's say you wanna do paw prints or you wanna do writing. You could do that. Writing is kind of tricky on the top. If you write up and down like you normally write, it's not gonna look 3D anymore. So my suggestion would be just to leave off the writing. I usually tell my students the same thing while we're doing it at school because it just throws off the illusion and makes it look kind of messy. And not saying mine doesn't look messy, but writing, it's, it's hard for kids to grasp how to make it look 3D. So then I usually trace my drawings with a Sharpie so you guys can see them a lot better. I'm gonna pause and do a time-lapse video and come right back. All right, so I've got my cake all traced and cleaned up a little bit, added a few hearts, and now I'm ready to do that technique I've done in the past where we outline and then we fill in with water with the marker. And I've realized that non-washable markers do better. Um, I don't know what it is about the washable markers, but when you add water, it does not seem to spread as well. So I've got some markers, some Crayola markers. 
And you could color in your whole cake if you want to. Or you could do this technique like I'm gonna do, it's up to you. I'm gonna switch to time lapse. All right, so here we go. I've got my Aqua Flow Royal Ling Nickel paintbrush. And I'm kind of squeezing it, trying to get that water to come out, and then I'm going to spread around my marker. And I don't know if you noticed while I was coloring that I was trying to add a little bit of shading. With markers, it's kind of tricky to add a shadow, but these were not too bad. Maybe I could leave like a little shiny spot on the plate somewhere. This is just like a regular paintbrush. Um, you want to clean it after you get done with one color. And you got to be careful when you switch to the new color. If this part is wet, it might bleed into the new part that you're painting. Just like any other kind of watercolor painting you might do. This is different. I've never used this before. It's kind of cool. Uh, I bought some to use, you know, because we're traveling around, we're ordering a cart, we're not in a classroom anymore. And I thought this would be easier instead of trying to do water and spilling water. But I haven't got to try them with the class yet. I wanted to try them first. And this is pretty cool. By the way, I'm using thick paper. If you're trying to do this on like a copy paper at home, it will not work. This is 80 pound paper, you could get 90 pound paper. Um, 60 paper might even be okay, but copy paper is just too thin. I'm gonna clean off my little brush. Try the brown, see how that does. It's an interesting color. All right, so Wayne Thiebaud is an artist who was born in 1920. He's actually still alive. His birthday was in November of last year, and he's 100 years old. And he was born in Arizona, and his family moved to California. He went to school in California. And one summer he got to be, have a summer internship at Walt Disney Animation Studios, which I think is an awesome opportunity. And so he became a cartoonist first. And then around the 1950s, he started painting everyday objects. And that's typically why he's looped into the pop art category. But the more I read, the more I see that he is not really a pop artist. His technique was a lot different. He even came before some of those pop artists. So a lot of people out there are saying that he is a pop artist, but I'm reading conflicting information. I was looking on the Encyclopedia Britannica earlier learning some new things about him. I didn't realize he started as a cartoonist. It's pretty neat. Then he started um, painting from life and painting every day objects. I'm not going to do this chocolate drip just yet because I'm afraid that will blend into the pink that I just did. I can use this. Oh, see what's happening right there. Mm. But I can take this that I laid down and kind of shade my cake. 
can be careful and stay away from the brown. Now, if you outline this with a washable marker or a Crayola marker, that too is going to bleed. Um, that's why I outlined with a Sharpie. And if you don't have a paintbrush, you don't have markers, you could definitely just use crayons. When we do this project in school, typically we use oil pastels. And that really gives it a creamy blended look, kind of more like Wayne Tebow's style. This technique has kind of become really popular for the virtual learning students learning at home that have a limited number of supplies. It's not my favorite technique, but it'll work in a pinch. You can see where I kind of stamped some lines with my hand some areas, but I can cover those up. You could use these cakes to make a fun birthday card or some kind of, ooh, look at that, holiday card. Just a pretty decoration. I wonder if I can blot that out or color over that. Sometimes in watercolor you can get your mistake wet and kind of blot it out. I learned you could kind of scratch it out, not typically with this paper, but a more thicker watercolor paper. But there we go, there's our Wayne Tebow inspired cake. I hope you guys and girls have fun making this. Again, customize it, make it your own, use your own style, your own decorations, and um, I can't wait to see what you do. Have a great time, boys and girls. I'll see you soon.